closer to the people in the room. In the waiting room? Yeah, I'm going to do that right now. Hey, Liz. Leopard and Rope Kimberly. Hi, everybody. Hi, Megan. Quantum Sun. Sun Fire. Fire. Sun Fire. Hello. I try to get the names right. Yeah, that's true. There Perfect. That's what you do. my notes. So, welcome. Uh, it's 601. Tonight we're talking about uh, the intersection of spirituality, religion, and philosophy. Yes, we're going to have a, a heady conversation tonight. Talk about, about things like that. Um, so we'll give it another minute or two because people have a tendency to show up in the next couple minutes. Um, I, uh, I just came back from Florida, having gone to, um, to try to adopt a puppy from my aunt. Uh, the puppy ended up being too big to fit on the plane. So I came back empty handed, which was kind of sad. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, we were really looking forward to a puppy. Yeah. Uh, and and it's not still outside of the realm of things that could happen. I just have to figure out another way to get this this little puppy with long legs to uh, to get up here from um, Florida. But we'll figure it out. I also personally want her to get a Chihuahua because she's so averse to it. Just saying. And you know why I'm adverse to chihuahuas? <laughs> why I'm adverse to chihuahuas? Because all the TikTok videos I send her are of nice, cuddly, no, little... are a rabid, teeth-bearing, growling attack chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> These are the only ones I ever see. I'm like, so why on earth would I want a chihuahua? Please. That's a that's a caliente chihuahua. <laughs> no, no chihuahuas for me, thanks. They're scary. It or a corgi, their butts float when they swim. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, could you repeat what you said tonight's topic was about? Because I didn't quite get that. The intersection of spirituality, religion, and philosophy. Um, ah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's, it's similar but different to things we've talked about before. Um, yeah, I mean, I can start. I always start this off by uh, sharing with you what my thoughts were going into making the topic be the topic. Um, you know, we talk about spirituality and religion a lot. Like spirituality, uh, and I'll, Joshua, these are his words that he put to it, but the idea being that spirituality is my religion with whatever I believe the universe to be about, whatever the power is in the universe to me. And then religion is the way that I interact with humans around the same sort of set of beliefs. So for instance, if I'm, you know, I was raised Catholic, right? And for that period of time as a child, um, I learned about those things. We learned how we went to church. We learned how to do religious things. Um, I had some challenges in childhood. My spirituality at the time was a very childlike relationship with the God of my understanding. Uh, I talked to God a lot, uh, which, you know, I, people call praying, but I was, you know, in active conversation with God. It's a lot of negotiating and bargaining with the God of my understanding as a child for things that I wanted to go uh, my way. <laughs> uh, I didn't know until later that that's not exactly, you know, the best grounds to pray from, you know, hey, God, I need you to do this for me. Um, and then I was always very smart and, you know, a book person, a, 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 an education school type person and philosophy always interested me. And so in some ways I feel like philosophy is the intellectual side of uh, what can be emotional and spiritual um, and social in terms of like religion for a lot of people is a, is a, is a social platform. You know, we, we learn how to interact with other people Um based on certain belief systems and within structures of religious ceremony and ritual and practice. Um, you know, later in my life, I converted to Judaism. There's a whole lot in Judaism that's about uh, tradition. You know, it, it, it is religion, but more than that, it's about how to, um, you know, how we take meals together and how we observe Sabbath together. And, and, and so religion prescribes a lot of those things for us. Philosophy for me, a lot of it has been um, just learning different ways to think about the world 
and what it's about and my place in it. Um, I've, I had the opportunity to study different sorts of philosophical thought or you know philosophical beliefs in in college when I was in school, um, and I find some of them really fascinating. Um, you know, there's all different schools of philosophy uh, based on what people believe is true about the world and how the world works or how people work or how God works in our lives. Essentialism and nihilism and there's all different kinds of isms in philosophy. Um, and not not everybody is familiar with all of them, but I think that exposure to philosophy gives us, helps provide structure in the way that we can think about the world and our place in it. And so I think that these things all intersect in terms of our own identity and our relationship with ourselves, and then how we take that into the world and relate to other people. Um, and so that's the, you know, the two minute version of what this, the, the envisioning of this topic was about. I don't know if you have anything you want to say. Or... Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> I'll jump in really quick. Uh, I define spirituality as how I treat myself through my belief system. I define religion, how I treat other living entities through my belief system, meaning if I believe in don't be a dick and I'm a dick to them, I'm not following my belief system. I, I believe it to be true, but I'm not practicing my belief system. Philosophy, I take it as my interpretation of how my belief, belief system works and how do I integrate it into my life or not. And my I equate philosophy to my understanding of how it works, my theory of how it works. Yes, and there's, you know, Hit, there's people through the millennium who have offered in writing and in other ways their same views. And so part of the study of philosophy is learning from others that same thing, how other people have incorporated their beliefs and their understanding of the world. And some of those people are more articulate than others. So we have books and writings and, and things which I have found really helpful. Um, I yeah. finger paint. <laughs> I draw stick figures. <laughs> <laughs> So how about you guys? The first question we have is how do you define spirituality and how does it intersect with religion and philosophy in your understanding? Uh, I'll, I'll take a stab at it. Um, quantum sunfire here. Um, you know, when I was very young, I, I went through some phases. First, where I wasn't exactly sure what God was. I was exposed to a lot of different things. Uh, the first thing I was really exposed to was Buddhism because when I was a little girl, my mother was a Buddhist. Interestingly enough, on uh, a military reservation in, in the South during the 60s. And um, then I was exposed to Episcopalianism quite a bit. Um, and my father was an atheist. My mother went through a lot of different religions. And I think I was probably more influenced by her. At one point I said, well, I don't believe in God because I didn't believe in the idea of an anthropomorphic God. Um, but as time went by, I started to have spiritual experiences and I started to believe, okay, there is something more than what's on this plane. And my sense of spirituality is about feeling like there's a connection between everyone. Uh, religion, I don't belong to a specific religion, but I, I have been considering over the past couple of years joining the Unitarian Universalism because you don't have to belong to a specific religion, even though it, it it's about human dignity. And, and philosophy, I guess, uh, I, I've explored some of that. Um, you know, that, that's a more difficult one because I think my philosophy changes with my experiences. Um, but there's an integration, yeah, between the spirituality, religion, and philosophy uh, to different degrees um, based on what I'm going through and how my beliefs change over time. And I'm open to having them change more as I as I learn about different people, as I explore different things. Um, I guess my bottom line is that I have some 
sense of caring for other people and the creatures on the earth and the earth itself. And that there's just a connection between everything. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Ren? Do all the things. Um, so for me, um, religion is man's invention, uh, to direct and, and push people into the thought process that is desired by whatever man comes up with at the time. Um, and anybody who's whatever religion, that's fine. I believe everything is valid because, we need something. There is something out there. Um, I don't consider myself religious. I consider myself spiritual. Um, for me, spiritual is our connection with the universe, with the earth, with beings, um, whether whether they're considered sentient or not. Um, there's energy and life force in everything that's living, um, even if we can't perceive that in our in our outlook and philosophy um for me is the um like cat like you were saying the the educational the more um yeah more like it's education type thing it's um heady it's more of a philosophy's more in your head and thinking about um, where spirituality you can interact with those things and through philosophy you may come into um spiritual things uh, but that's what it is for me thank you oh thank you so for those of you who are just dropping in we're talking tonight about the intersection of spirituality religion and philosophy us have already put a few words to it and so if anyone would like to jump in feel free to raise your virtual hand um one of the things that i did want to say as you were talking is for me i don't know that i believe in an anthropomorphic god either like you know like the guy in the white robes kind of god right um and i do believe more in a spirit like in an einstein sort of there's a you know there's there's energy or spirit in the universe that sort of underlies the totality of things. Um, but I'm comfortable, you know, what I just said took a lot of words to say, you know, the spirit of the universe, da, 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 da. I just used the word God. But I don't mean like, you know, the, the God in the robes. I mean, God, is a three letter shorthand term for all the power that is in the world the you know the, the divine the great story like all the words that can be used i just use god because it's easier but i don't have a lot of term around it you know parents i've been you know traumatized at the hand of the word of god so i get some of the things that i've taken away from this so far is exposed versus pursued mm -hmm. i was exposed to this versus i pursued this and those are significant differences in pursuit of belief uh also, uh, religion being community, community exercise or community practice. Yeah. Uh, as I define, because when I defined religion, I defined it as a, as an action versus uh, a practice. <clears throat> like, in order to be religious, one person just has to engage with another person, and you are actively engaging in your belief systems and how you connect with someone or not. Right. The action of of yeah. being religious versus uh, being in or leaning into an organized, structured religion where you have someone who's leading and stuff like that. Now, I've been to smaller communities across the country, and I'm sure there's a few folks here who have been to smaller or are from smaller or are in smaller communities where the religious structure is the community, right? right? Where that is, the, that, that is where the kids go to. That is where everyone goes to on Sundays because there is nothing else going on. And that is the community support. And uh, it's tough because, like, that's the only support network a lot of folks have. Yeah. And it's almost like you have to give a little to get a little in those circumstances. Yeah. Uh, it's very intense being in a stadium 
arena with people on a Sunday and they have a 747 on the stage as a prop. Because when I when I went to Kansas, oh God, God, listen, did you do that? Yeah, it, and 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 that was religious. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was it was a Christian church. That and, sounds like a story for another day. And I went and I sat and I observed and I was I paid respects and you know I was I was a visitor into their space, uh, understanding that you know they have their beliefs and they have mine. Yeah. Uh, Kieran. Kieran. So, Kat, you reminded me of I don't I don't do boxes. I grew up in the Episcopal Church, which was totally liberal, but um, it was the same freaking thing all the time, but, um, so I, I don't do, I don't do traditions anymore. Um, it, it's void to me, to me, but I, you reminded me though. I remember when I lived in Inwood in this tiny little bath and tiny little, uh, apartment in the bathroom. And I was hit, sitting there having a conversation with God or whatever is out there with the unit. And, and I literally was verbally out loud going, so this linguistic box that we put you in, does it even touch what you are? And um, so I came up with the word, I was like, well, I'll just use the word universe. And that didn't really work for me. And so I have to use the word God too. Like if I even do that, I have to, just because it just wasn't sitting, universe wasn't sitting for me. But yes, you were, uh, I, I'm on that same page as you. And um but um, I just still remember being on the toilet, having this conversation with God about linguistic boxes because our, our brains are so finite. That's one thing I love about the universe, God, spirit, whatever, is I can have a conversation with just about anything. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks for letting me share that funny. Uh, it, it's still a funny story to me that I'm having this moment. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Kyla? There we go. I pushed all the buttons. Um, <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, lots of very interesting stuff, of course. Um, tradition I've heard mentioned a couple times, and I recently heard someone define it in a very new way, which is that they can be peer pressure from your ancestors. And there's definitely this lovely value to lots of tradition, I think, um, that brings us together and tells us what's important to whatever our community is. But there's also these things where yeah, it can kind of perpetuate certain, um, you know, negative or destructive things. Um, I actually had initially put, raised my hand to respond to the first question that you two had posed about, you know, these three terms. And I loved especially, Joshua, how your response was less about how these terms tend to be understood and what they mean to you, but more about how you use them just for yourself. Um, my guess is it must be quite an interesting conversation to broach with new people each and every time. Um, but for me, I would say that philosophy and spirituality are both ways of understanding connection within and without, and that philosophy is more the thoughts and that spirituality is more the feeling of it. Um, and that religion then is kind of the prescriptive for that. You know, it's a bunch of imperatives and restrictions and consequences and rewards that have great uh, intentions to help us lead the life that whoever, you know, delivered this message or received this message um, to help us understand what they know the message to be. But then, of course, throughout history, these things, power, struggles, etc., get twisted. Um, and the final thing that I had wanted to respond to was about the support network that someone had mentioned the value of it. Um, I grew up in the Midwest in a college town, so it was usually reasonably populated, um, but it was a lot of white Christians. And I remember at my elementary school, we had one black family, one Jewish family, and my atheist family. Um, and that was a hell of a thing. Um, my best friend, when we would have sleepovers on a Saturday, I go to church in the morning and her dad would try to make us giggle in the pew, which that's my experience of church. So it was fun, but there were kids who would say to my face when I was five, six years old, well, if you don't have religion, how can you know right from wrong? And you're going to hell. And especially when you're at the age where you still believe in Santa Claus and all those things, spoiler alert, everyone. Um, it's, it's like, even though you know, and even though you're told at home not to worry about that or to try to ignore it, or, you know, they might not be open to ideas. Um, it's, it is, it's very isolating and you feel, you feel at least a piece of it that maybe it would be true. And maybe I am wrong. 
and maybe I'm not a good person and how could I know for sure? Um, and I guess that brings me to a question either to contemplate or respond to, but what's the difference between knowing and believing? Oh, there's a huge power in that. That's my jam. That we've, is my jam. We've had that conversation. Oh, we've my goodness. Welcome yeah. to our uh -huh. conversations. And I'm sure we'll talk about it. <laughs> wanna... No, I mean, I mean believing leads room for doubt. I was just about to write those two words on a piece of paper. Yep. <laughs> believing leaves room for doubt. Knowing there's, it's, there's just, you are certain. Like, for example, I had an experience uh, with imposter syndrome. <clears throat> and I'm sitting here, COVID just kicked off. And I'm sitting here saying, man, I wish someone could see all the work that goes into this. I wish they could say they were proud. And I was ashamed. I was, I was in it. I was in it 100%. And I was here by myself. And this was June. Fast forward to uh, September. And I'm speaking to a friend of mine who's a medium. Hokey pokey. You know, I believe in it. I don't believe in it. Forever, right? I have to see it to believe it. And we were talking nothing. I hadn't spoken to him in three years. We were talking about uh, going out there to do a psychedelic journey with them to sit and to do integration work with them in the uh, coming month. And before we hang up, she goes to me, Joshua, there's a message for you. And I'm like, oh, really? What? Share with me. And she goes, there's a woman here and she wants me to tell you that she sees all the work that you're doing and she's proud of you. And my fucking jaw dropped because I was ashamed to say that to anyone. Like, I can't ask for validation because it's not the same. But when something, this message passed to me from someone who I hadn't spoken to in three years, told me that, what it did is made me lose my fear of death. Because now, from what I experienced, I don't believe in life after death now. I know there's life after death now. Because of this experience that I had, and as I'm experiencing it, that's how I'm processing the math for me. What that gave me was a, the power of losing my fear of time. To where I don't have, a, <laughs> and when I go, it's okay. I'm not on a time limit anymore. And it took me from believing to knowing, having an experience like that. But that shift comes with a lot of, a lot of freedom. That's a big word to use, but there's a literal. A, I like I I realized it one morning. I don't fear time anymore, and that was very powerful. So I think going from believing to knowing is very significant in what a person believes to be governing existence. Anything, any belief system. If you just sit and you try to figure out what do, what goes from belief over to knowing, this is where the superpowers are. This is where the permission are. This is where the superpowers are. Because it just, for me, it shrugs off a lot of doubt. Yeah, I would say that. What he said. Uh, Mr. T. Sorry to interrupt with that. That just blew my mind. I was writing that right down as she said that that was being written on paper. That blew my mind. Um, but I just wanted to share my notes with all this because my connection with everything, my spirituality is my connection. But whatever that is that we have out there, <laughs> um, religion is your way, the way that you speak, you connect, you feel, and you do to get that connection. You know, it's hmm. the actual structure of what you do. And then philosophy is exactly what I was, what you believe and know to be true. Um, I've stayed a strong Christian since I was a child. I had my, my faith confirmed to me in prayer. There was nothing you're going to take from me. I don't care how much I get tortured or whatever. It's, it's there. Um, but I'm a very open person and I've been exploring pagan, the pagan stuff the um, witch stuff, you know, I have stones. I have stones that I keep near me for whatever reason that they're drawn to me, you know, so th it's there. Um, and the biggest argument I have with a lot of Christians is there is more than one way to go forward. It's how I word it. It's not even about heaven. Not always. You can't, can't be. You <laughs> can't be. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing, Mr. G. I think it's an interesting point to say, though, that like the the thing between knowing and believing, right? like you can come and and I agree with you entirely. There's there's one thing uh, to believe something, and then there's another thing to just know it, right? When you just know it, there's like a certainty that no one can take away from you, whether you received you know from prayer or from 
experience, whatever that experience is. And, and it, you put it so well, it's like a great case in point, but everyone would have their own case in point of, a, of experience that would lead you to, to knowing this, right? Um, but that knowing this can come in any number of ways. It can come through spirituality, it can come through religion, and it comes through philosophy, right? It, 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 you can get to your place of knowing through any of those channels, that there's not any one way um, that that can come to a person. And I think, because I think some of us are more emotionally bent, some of us are more intellectually bent in terms of how we really relate to the world and to the things in it and the people in it. We, we all have different ways of feeling connected as as human beings um to thoughts and feelings and so you know my my experience through uh my recovery i have had those exact experiences of of praying and i call it praying the same i use the word prayer the same way i use the word god like any sort of communication that i have with the house with with the spirit that's greater than me i call prayer um whether it's like a hail mary prayer because something's like not going the way i wanted to i'm like Yes, please. Can I have some help here? Um, or you know, another another really effective prayer for me is I can't, I can't do it. like, like surrender for me is a type of prayer. Like I when I get to a point where I'm like done trying to do it my way, and then I, um, I just surrender. I like basically give it over to God. Um, I have experiences in the wake of doing that historically now that make me know that there is a power greater than me, that it take, that I am taken into account, that I'm heard, that, that it matters. And you can't take that from me. You can't, you can't tell me that that's not true because it's that's what's real to me. And, and I've come to that in a number of different ways. I forgot what I was gonna say, but that was, that was awesome. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say now. There was something that before you went on that nice words. That's all right. You can raise your hand when it comes back. If I can just make a uh, statement, <clears throat> please don't solicit other people through the chat. Be respectful. Um, as I have to remove someone now. Yeah, I, I'll finish that while you're doing it. Keep, keep your statements to I statements. This this hour is dedicated to us sharing about our own experiences, right? So. And the way I the way I feel most comfortable about that is when people use I instead of you. I don't want advice here. I want to hear from your experience. And please be kind. And and we haven't shut down the chat because of being able to take people on faith that you're being kind to one another. But if someone DMs you something inappropriate, please tell us right away. Right away. We're not about it. And um, so that being said, we can carry on. Okay. So uh, if I can jump in real quick. So as we're talking, what I'm realizing is math is my philosophy of how all this is governed. Because I'm hearing folks talk about yeah, prayer and stuff like that. And I've I've been spending the last week trying to dissect well, what is prayer, right? But through a math philosophy that certain outputs bring certain responses, right? Certain inputs bring certain responses. And uh, as I'm listening to it all, it's just helping me process. So math is my philosophy around the existence of. You're in good company. Oh, listen, I'm. I'm listen. I'm eating it up. You and Einstein, <laughs> you're in good company. Did you want to go into the next question? Sure. Oh, hold oh. on, Mr. T. I remember what it was. It was prayer and how you do it. I do it driving down the road. I do it when I work. I, I do go to my knees sometimes and try to give some devoted thinking time. Um, you know, I, I do, but it's all day long. I'm wondering sometimes um with some of the pagan it's really the energy you just speak out of your mouth to people comes out so i've learned to think it's not just getting to your knees and praying but it really is all that you let out yeah like yeah, you said if you're heard you're validated if you're heard you're heard yeah no, I, and I agree. I think I think it's true. I I, on, I also believe that um, the energy that's out there is also the energy that's in here. Um, you know, to uh, to theology or uh, you know that sort of philosophy of, of religious belief. I honestly believe that the power that's out here in the universe, we're all born with some, uh, and and keeping up after it and and 
uh, is our is our spiritual charge while we're here in this incarnation. I think that uh, the energy that I'm given is my it's my job to do well with it, to to seed to the most amount of good that I can. Uh, and so my belief about heaven or hell, because I don't believe in those things as they're prescribed in, in the religions that talk about them like that. I do believe, though, that we impact the quality of the universal energy by virtue of what we bring back when we're done. When, we, when we're done with this particular incarnation, how we've either negatively or positively impacted the energy we were entrusted with goes back to the universe. And that's how I believe we all affect one another and that it matters why what we do. It matters how we treat people. It matters how we, how we go through the, through the world. Can I jump on a comment real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Update audible, and then we'll come to the hands up. Someone said, uh, I have a question to the host, and I'd open it to you guys as well. Uh, how do you guys feel about saints and relics? There are many relics in Orthodox churches that people go to, go see and pray, and that they get their sight back, or those kinds of miracles. I don't have a lot of experience personally with, with miracles. I don't know that many people who have had them. I don't know, you know, you hear stories, but I don't personally know any. Um, I think that. Relics, saints, any of the in the ortho, in any of the organized religions, the, the the focused the way to focus your your prayer energy that that is given by specific religions are just that they're just ways that are given that if you know if they resonate with you then I think that's great like I I don't think there's anything wrong with it I mean I think every religion actually has a way to help channel that energy prayer connection conversation. Um, and and they're all valid. I think every single one of I'm I, I've also been in school is it, is it for, to be an interfaith minister. At the end of the day, I think it's all the same. Every bit of it, all of it. What I think as we're talking about it is like when I I, ha, I make prayers four or five times a day, and I just had this acknowledgement this morning that my prayer starts. My ritual is the minute I pick up whatever I'm going to be doing, if it's burning an incense, if it's doing something, up until I light it. I say my prayer and I ring my bell. That's my ritual mm -hmm. in speaking out what I want to have, right? So my intention, my intentional energetic output is going into a certain practice. With that, I believe that if I take the actions toward those, toward that desire, meaning I say yes when yes presents itself and I say no when no presents itself to get me closer to the target, there's a faith and belief that if I keep that practice, the the return will consistently be the same. I will keep getting closer to where I want to go. When it comes to re relics and um, uh, things of that nature, I think if the person has faith in it, it'll work for them or not, but it's theirs to say. And I can't judge a person's belief in whatever they're doing because that's theirs to believe. Yeah. Um, JV. JV. Yes, hello. Uh, just had a couple comments about things that were said along the way. Uh, for me, prayer is actually not so much about my words as it is about my heart. My concept of my connection to my higher power is that my higher power knows what's going on deep inside me, which oftentimes I don't know myself. Uh, some of you may be uh, familiar with a poem that's a called A Prayer by an Unknown Confederate Soldier. And it goes through and it talks about asking God for all these different things. Um, like I asked God for strength, but I was given weakness so that I might feel the need of God. And it goes on and does a bunch of those different things. And at the end it says, I asked for all things that I might enjoy life. I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I'm sorry, did I get that right? Yeah, um, I think. Anyway, it says, I got nothing that I asked for, but everything that I hoped for. Almost despite myself, my unspoken prayers were answered. I am um, among all men most richly blessed. And that's been very meaningful to me in a lot of different ways. Uh, the other thing was talking about uh, um, what we do and the significance of that. And maybe I, I don't know if I understood what was exactly what was being uh, implied or said, uh, but it talked about having an effect, you know, like after we leave this realm and pass on, 
Um, I believe that actually spiritual reality is something that is profound and, and happening right now. And that um, uh, what I do, what I say, what I think, what I believe actually is influencing uh, this world right here and now. It's sort of like the ripples on the, the ripples in a pond kind of an effect. Um, and so I think it matters, you know, what I'm doing now in a very um, concrete way right here and now. And that's the way that I seek to uh, live my life. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you, JV. Very, very, uh, when you said from the heart, something Kat and I talked about is when make like, cause I'm trying to break down to math, a prayer down to a science, a math of how is the request submitted in order for it to be acknowledged for there to be act. Like I'm trying to break this down. We manifested at St. Andrew's cross from a simple prayer, dude. I, I was working with someone and I said, from my heart, I wish I had a St. Andrew's cross so that they could lean on because they're uncomfortable. Like I wanted something for them, for their, and it wasn't just a person. Like this was someone of a lot of time investment, a lot of growth. Like we have a, a very deep, rich uh, relationship by that point. And it was, it was selfless. And no shit, within 48 hours, we had a St. Andrew's cross delivered because it came from the heart. It wasn't, I want to St. Andrew's. It's like, I, I wish I had something to support this person in, in this. And <laughs> right. Yeah, well, no, no lie. And, 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 and we sort of like, we're a little bit joined at the hip, not, not for nothing, but it, the, the, the cross came to us through a connection that I had that was on it. Like literally I got an out of the blue phone call from someone I hadn't heard from in a year or two and said, Hey, I have this new boyfriend <laughs> and his, he has this cross and it doesn't go with his decor and he's looking to get rid of it. You're the only one I know who might want it. Would you like it? I was like, what? Dude. Uh, yes. <laughs> and I didn't know about this prayer. So I called him and said, hey, this is going on. And he was like, are you kidding? And, and then I heard about the, the prayer. And like, after the prayer. Dude. Thank you, JV. Thank you. Uh, we Can I have say one other thing? Please. Yeah. Uh, back when I was in high school, uh, I was involved with a group that was very went through a, a phase where there was this really big emphasis on, you know, discovering what the will of God was and uh, being very much in my head, uh, especially in those days, uh, I, I would, you know, tie myself in knots and get all worried about, about all that. Um, eventually over time, I came to the conclusion that I believe that God isn't so worried about exactly what choice I make i.e. whether I choose A or B, as he is uh, worried about the reasons why I would choose A or B, you know, where that is, where that's coming from in my heart. I'm done. What What are my motives? Um, yeah. Yep. Thank you, JV. Thank you, Kat. Thank you, JV. Yeah, I was going to say, <clears throat> I, I work as a practicing clinical hypnotherapist. And uh, I work with people at the level where um, body and mind um, come together. And we sort of explore the relationship between body and mind to help them overcome pain, uh, trauma issues, phobias, uh, addictions, um, and in some cases, chronic medical conditions. And it's a fairly well-known mapping in Eastern uh, medicine and philosophy between the mind and the body. You may have heard of chakras. You may have heard of meridians. But these are things that are real because they are powerfully connected to the uh, subconscious and the parasympathetic nervous system through the vagus nerve. So I teach relaxation, focus and energy exercises that can have really quite miraculous effects 
in relation to things like arthritis, um, diabetes, uh, stress-related, um, uh, you know, heart disease, where people can start to take control of their blood pressure, can start to take control of their blood sugar, can start to control take control of their pain. And some people might see that as miraculous, but I think it's simply that Western medicine has chosen to treat symptoms rather than causes. And the spiritual experience of coming through a program of clinical hypnotherapy is very much akin to a sense of awakening. And awakening to the truth, awakening to consciousness is also a very powerful religious spiritual experience. And in some ways, removing ourselves from religious tradition and coming to our own truth is a big step forward. So how do you define spirituality, religion, and philosophy and its intersection? Religion is typically a, a system of metaphors, a belief complex, which allows a society to survive. Um, consciousness is what we all have, and it's the lens through which we see the world, and it's something that we are trained in, possibly according to religion. And then philosophy, I think, uh, is where consciousness takes a, a step backwards and contemplates consciousness um, from a third party position. Uh, and what you'll find is that, that when, you, when you sort of look at things in the way you describe, you come up with a triumvirate. Um, and we often think about those that triumvirate in Christianity as sort of Holy Spirit, the Godhead, um, you know, and then, and then Christ, because uh, they, they are metaphors for the, for the three different things. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. So would anyone else have any input? Would anyone else like to share? I mean, we have oh, we have time. We have time. We have oh, time. No. I, was I was ready for you to tell me your two minutes. Okay. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> so <clears throat> can spiritual spirituality exist without religious beliefs or philosophical frameworks? Why or why not? Well, I absolutely believe that it can be. I mean, I think spirituality um I, spirituality i agree with you is our personal uh belief or our personal interaction with the universe however we understand it i mean i think we're all i think we're all spiritual being you know the, the phrase that, that runs in my circles is that we're spiritual beings having a human experience right so you can be um you know you, you don't have to be from any religious background to be able to see magic in trees in the sky and in the sound of a, a mother's voice when they talk to their baby i mean there's a million places in the world where you can be in touch with spirit that has nothing to do with religion or you know the intellectual underpinnings that are involved with philosophy that's just me that's what i believe uh kieran um i ascribe to mysticism it doesn't really need a particular religion or denomination or anything. It, it's just, I, I was I was kind of straddling between North Paganism and Christianity, because that's my background, um, for a while. And then I ended up landing on Christian mysticism, which led me down more paths, um, which continues to bring me down paths, which is kind of mysticism. It just uh, it's, think of it like an onion. How things just unflow, un un or peel off in front of you and become more apparent. So I I don't really, aside from maybe a word God or pray, uh, a prayer. I I don't really. I just let it flow. Which for me, if you know me well enough, which is is really 
uh, interesting because I'm not like that. I'm not spontaneous. I'm not, you know, I'm pretty serious. I'm always logical. So for me, just let that shit flow uh, and step outside of religion uh, altogether is, um, and not do the traditions and the rituals. And I, I mean, even when I was trying to pursue Norse paganism, I had, I had like two of the gods that I like, and I ended up throwing that out. I'm like, I don't need that. Um, so, and I just, I go back to the, so anyway, I put in there Descartes um, with the mind body connection, uh, Master Joshua, and mysticism also. I mean, there's a there's a lot out there. Awesome, thank you, Kieran. Uh, we have Primal. Yeah, I was going to say that if if anybody wants to sort of enjoy a very simple and very rewarding spiritual experience, um, I would invite them to go deep within themselves you know and and you might think of this as a sort of a meditative exercise but close your cl close your eyes um relax go deep within yourself to a place of childhood happiness and find there your little self from all those years ago and allow your little self from all those years ago to come to you and talk to you And for many people, that's a very profound experience. And it can then mean that you have a conversation between your inner child and who you are now. What type and, of questions would you ask? As, a, as a, If I was the child, I would ask, what, what happened? And if I was my big self talking to my inner child, I would say, well, quite a lot of things happened, but look, we survived. We made it. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. that. That's a spiritual experience. Yeah. I'm um, going to give that a shot. Do that. Um, there's a meditation on my website, which will guide you through that. Awesome. Thank you, Ren. I believe Quantum had their hand up. Uh, if you want to come back. Quantum, then Ren. Quantum's on mute. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I, I relate to what you said about mysticism. Um, I find that it actually has been a part of my life, all of my life, because a combination of prayer and meditation and sort of kind of otherworldly experiences, dreams, meeting people and having connections without words at times. Um, that I think is all a part of mysticism and that sense of connection and self-examination and re-examining the things I believe and questioning myself, okay, do I really believe this now? Um, is it a part of my experience? Does this hold true? Um, am I being honest with myself and with others? Um, truth is, is an important part of a spirituality to me you know it's not that i might not always be truthful like if somebody were threatening me and i thought the only way to get out of it was to lie but and i, I went through a period at one point in my life where i didn't believe in anything for about a year because somebody lied to me in my face about something they had been pushing down my throat all my life and then i thought nothing had meaning and then I didn't care. And then I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I am allowing my soul to be warped and this is not a part of what I really believe. So I stopped it. This happened when I was, I was like in my twenties and I said, no, that's, that's not who I am. You know, let me get back to the truth of what I really believe. And even when things are difficult, allow myself now to be vulnerable in a lot of situations where I wouldn't have when I was younger. So I know it, maybe it was a little incoherent, I'm not sure, no, no, but uh, it's well, it's I'm not a linear, yeah. Sorry, I was just really relating to the idea of truth mm -hmm. and the importance. I don't know about like, you know, existential, like truth isn't truth for everybody, but truth isn't truth for me, mm -hmm. right? My connection to, 
spirit, God, religion, other people is, is best when I'm being honest with myself. And at least for me, that's been my biggest challenge all my life is to be, is to be really honest with myself. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Run? Run? Going back to what Primal Connect was talking about, um, when you are working with the inner child, having conversations with the inner child, particularly um, if there was abuse as a child, it can be very important as your big self to establish that you are now the adult, you are the authority, and you can keep the child safe. Often, um, there's a lack of trust of authority or even any adult by an adult because of childhood traumas, um, and the child doesn't feel safe. And they, so that comes up in life, and even if we don't understand why, it comes up. So it's very important to establish that connection with that inner child that you are the adult and you will take care of them and that they are now safe. If that in fact is the case. Thank you. And for the longest time I bristled at the idea of an inner child. <laughs> I used to know someone who came to my meetings and said, if I find that inner child, I'm going to take it out and shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> serious so uh we have we have about eight minutes left okay uh you want to do one more sure um how do individuals navigate conflicts or tension between their spiritual beliefs religious practices and philosophical viewpoints hmm. um i know for me um some of that question comes from the idea that I've been in pursuit of my spiritual beliefs, my religious practices, and my philosophical viewpoints for the most of my life, and they haven't always lined up, right? Do you have an example? Um, I did a, a stint in, in one of the major cults, and uh, my, my time in that group, it was, I was in Scientology, and the beliefs that uh, are fostered there, which I struggled really hard to embrace and deal with and um, were actually in conflict with the things I really believed. And so when I came out the other side of that experience, I had to sit down with myself and say, well, like, like was said earlier, what do I really believe? Like I had to throw a lot of that, like bath water out with that baby and, and reestablish for myself, where am I now? What do I believe now? Um, so there have been conflicts for me between the things that I believe and the things that I know, and the things that I've read. And what really sits with me and sometimes sometimes my biggest challenge with myself sometimes is to just sit still and quiet and 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 wrestle some of these things down to the mat so i know where i'm at that's what i had to do when i got out of scientology is what what do i actually believe what i said earlier about the universe and our spirit and all of that was was a lot of the outgrowth of that experience i love Kyla? Thank you. Um, so after I was raised atheist, um, when I was probably 16, 17, 18, um, I started to have, uh, yeah, a, a sense that maybe it wasn't the case that what we see and touch is all there is, um, and explored it for quite some time and eventually converted to Islam as an adult for about six and a half years, um, practicing by the end of it, like, you know, veiled, not face veil, but like, yeah, the, the whole thing. And uh, I remember the, the undoing as well, which was, I guess, near the end of 21, um, which was a more rapid process than taking it on. But, uh, you know, it was another time when things I'm told or am told I should believe and things I do believe are in conflict to the point where I can't ignore it anymore and can't, you know, put a mental gymnastic band-aid on it to satisfy myself for a little while longer. 
And so I reached out to a couple of people, one in particular who was a religious leader in the area who had, uh, in a couple of conversations, appeared fairly progressive. And I said, ah, I know this person is the one who will be able to help explain this. And there was one particular detail that he kept dodging and eventually pressed him and asked a very direct question and said, you know, I've asked this three times. And um, it, it was that horrible moment where you really wish that you'll hear what you want to hear and what you need to hear, but you know what's about to be said. And it was just like it crashed, it crashed down. And it, especially realizing that I was a visual representation of this set of ideals, I was like, I have to change a whole lot of stuff right now. Um, that was a hell of a thing. So yeah, a lot of times when I get stuck inside my own Mm, circuits and you know little trails that go round and round the same tree um, I'll go outside and say you know hey instead of thinking 50 things at the same time I'm going to say one thing hopefully coherently and somebody else will tell me something back and we'll see what happens thank you thank you I had a, I had a similar experience around Christianity when I was much younger um, and 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 a crystallizing moment where somebody says something and you're like okay then this has to change at least for me like I can't I can't subscribe to this because this just isn't isn't real for me. Oh, now we're down to three minutes. I was thinking about this answer of the conflict and tension. It's like I I would float that further inward if I'm not practicing my beliefs, if I'm not being truthful in every regard. And I don't mean as habitually lying, I mean not being truthful with myself, omitting things to myself or others, uh, behaving in ways or doing things that are not in my best interests, right? Because that there goes up against my spiritual beliefs and religious practices and my viewpoint, right? right. Why am I not doing what's right? Right, and not right. The not right for just now, but the right. Period. Right. Right, the right overall. The right. And it's like... Yeah. And that's where in the lies the conflict and the shame and the doubt and the frustration and the anger because it's like, I know better. Why am I not doing better? Or why am I allowing myself to not do better for myself? Right. right? Because I can be the saint outward. I can be everything I need to be for everyone else. But if I'm not doing it here, that negates my whole spiritual belief. I'm not doing what's right here. And it's like, then it's off for what? Like I have a friend who... In the big picture, that's what would happen. And they were like, but I'm praying and I'm like doing my chakras and I'm like doing all this stuff. It was the opposite. It was outward. Right. It was in relation to other people. Right. And uh, the absence of grace in some faces. Right. And it was like, but I'm doing everything right. I'm cleaning all my chakras. It's like, but the practice of outward. Right. But how are you treating others? Isn't the okay. same. Uh, we have one more minute. Primal, shoot, 30 seconds. I was good, simply going to say that the voice in your head is not your voice. It's a voice that's being put there. And when you come to stillness and silence in your mind, then you enjoy peace and connection with the truth. Thank you, Thank Primal. You. All right. So next week, we're going to talk about cultivating mindfulness and presence in everyday life. We're going to go from the heady intellectual conversation into something a little bit more grounded. And uh, hopefully everyone will come with practices that they would like to share with each other about how they uh, achieve presence and mindfulness in everyday life. Um, please join us at nine o'clock for Uncovered Conversations, where tonight they're going to be talking about how to deal with friends and family in vanilla situations. Uh, these are, are the, uh, the, the ho head of household dominance who have submissives and relationships and all sorts of things. And then, you know, we all have, you know, family or friends that aren't in the lifestyle. And so how do we, how do we navigate, you know, oh, this slave over here with this collar. What is that? Like, who is that? You know, there's, I imagine it'll be a very interesting hour of conversation. Yeah. I have nothing to put in on that conversation. <laughs> it's like, hi, Ma, yeah, this is my slave, Natalie. <laughs> what? What's for lunch? <laughs> no, 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 that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and starting and starting next week we're going to be having um our uh beyond, beyond the collar uh 
from 7.30 to 8.30. So we're just going to fit in one more conversation between this one and Unconvert Conversation. And this is going to be um, two, two slaves who are going to start this conversation and talk about all things on the right side of the splash, as opposed to all things on the left side of the splash. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited to see how that develops. Um, so anyway, uh, as always, now I'm going to start thinking about topics for May. Uh, I'm happy to have help with that. So please reach out to me if you have thoughts about what you would like for us to talk about on these Tuesday calls. Uh, you can email me at uh, NYC at Gmail. Uh, hit me up on any of the social media. I'm, I'm happy to have input for, for making up things to talk about. And um, we're two weeks away from launching our mentorship pods. Uh, April 15th, I believe. The first one we'll launch on. We're going to be yeah. launching the first one. And the idea around that is for people to develop this self-awareness of beliefs, of intention, the purpose of self-awareness in a group setting similar to this, except with the intention of doing this work, reflecting every week on a set of questions, coming in and discussing, building vulnerability and accountability with each other with the intention of gaining this self-awareness. Uh, we'll have more information out on it soon. It's a six-month program, 26 weeks, mm -hmm. uh, meeting every Monday for four hours, I believe that's what we're boiling it Roughly, down to. Yeah, this, this one's going to start at 8, so it's more like 8 to 11-ish. Eight, eight, about three hours. Yeah. With the idea of diving deep, approaching this with the intentions of, at the end of the six months, I know where I stand. Right, And the people in which I share this time and space for me are my accountability partners, are the people in which we steer each other in processing these hardships, processing these questions, these philosophies. Right, while maintaining the momentum as a pack moving forward through all of these conversations and all of these awarenesses. So if you're interested, if that sounds interesting, you can hit me up about that too. I'll, I'll get you to the list. And then once the, 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 that first pot is filling pretty quickly, and so we'll, we'll launch uh, subsequent ones as soon as you have interest in time. Awesome. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have Thanks a good evening, coming. and I'll see you guys in the room. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Thank you. There. You're still there. Oh, no, it's, oh that's right, because the laptop is the. I can't.